Episode 1. It's time to sit on down and sip the tea with the Root Chat, bringing you tonight's Tea of the Week. Gossip from the streets, what's trending, and what's cooking at Chit Chat Chew. Tonight, we have an exclusive interview with Real House Ross and Potomac, Candace Diller Bassett. Three, two, one. This is the Group Chat with your host, the Travis Webb, Darius Williams, Troy Gaskin, and Joy Sloan. Represent the biggest dog section all the world. It is Travis Ware, and welcome to the group chat. <laughs> What's going on, Mr. Williams? How you doing today, Travis? It's so good to see y'all. Welcome to the group chat. Hallelujah. We praise God. What's going on, Brother Gaskins? What's going on, Travis? You know, I'm living, you know what y'all been saying? Um, I don't want to be uh, what is it? I want to be seen, not heard, view, I mean, alive, whatever it is. I'm here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Since we're speaking of funerals, how you doing, evangelist, pastor, bishop, deacon, funeral director, and bomber, and also Paul Barry, George Sloan Jr. How you doing? <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> hey, y'all. Happy Thursday. Listen, I'm doing good. Uh, Troy, it is, it's good to be seen uh-huh. in your view. Amen. That's yeah. what you I, I knew you would know. Okay. And speaking of viewed and seen, honey, we just all was at the Shane Magazine couple release party yeah. for Jamar Braxton. Y'all, how y'all enjoyed it? That was fun, right? No problem. I really yeah. had a good time. Chad, Chad, been acting like, Chad has been acting like he the it girl for years, but he finally got us on the red carpet, y'all. Look at <laughs> it. <laughs> finally got us on BD3. Yeah. Uh, hey, y'all go. Hey, y'all go. Well, it was a good time. You know, I, I'm glad we got to see everybody. You know, boots, honey, boots. Boots. Yeah. You know, boots and heels and shit. My feet was hurting. Who boots, feet were hurting? My feet were hurting. I, I had on twinkie heels. Yeah, but I, so I don't see why your feet were hurting, but carry on. That's why oh. her feet be hurting too, because she got, you know. The kittens. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Child, mm-hmm. yeah, them feet was hurting down. Okay, and speaking of hurting, but we were super duper excited, y'all. Later on in the show, we have special guest Candice from the Real House of Washington Potomac. Listen, y'all, we're going to be talking about everything. We got so much stuff to talk about. We got so much to dig. And, honey, she's, I heard she's going to give us a little exclusive, y'all. Y'all just got to stay tuned. But hold on, here we go. My mic. Um, Troy? Is that, is that Travis? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> here you go. Back to you. Oh, <laughs> back to me. Oh, 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 oh. What's up, y'all? Y'all already know what time it is. We're about to get right into the hot topics of the week. Child, I thought we was done with Wendy because, you know, we talked about Wendy documentary. We wanted Wendy to get better. And when people see you down, they will kick you when you down and her husband is kicking her while she's down. Now, Wendy's husband allegedly, well, they say they have the court documents, but he is demanding two years of back divorce payments because he relies on them for the expenses. And he said, you know, he's a father of two, basically. You know, this was in their, you know, matter agreement. And although, you know, under guardianship, like he wants the guardian, like if they go to court and they rule that he gets the money, he wants the guardianship to go ahead and pay him. And even long in the article, they're like, Wendy has no money. Like, you know, she's wherever she's at in her life currently. And it's just like, I don't know. I think Kevin just, Kevin is really reaching. It's like, you... You won't just let this woman go. Like, let her go. You made your bed. Now, lay in it. Child, all I got to say in regards to that, Kevin, you need to lick Wendy's big foot at this point. And the reason why I'm saying it is because you chose to have a child outside of her. You should have figured that out. When y'all knew y'all was getting a divorce, you should have been planning. Okay, do I need to go down to the wig office? Go ahead and get me a little wig. Do I need to go down to the food stamp house? Give me a little food stamp. Do I need to go to the unemployment office? Because you've been unemployed for a while. I don't know why you didn't go down there and see if you get a little check. They would have gave you a couple of dollars. You should have did all of that stuff and had everything lined up. But now that Wendy is back on the lifetime, now you're trying to get her lifetime check when you should be worried about the lifetime stuff that you got to do with that other baby that's not Wendy. You are so right. I I agree, Travis. I I mean, I couldn't agree with you more, but this is a prime example of what happens when you let people into your house. You don't know what's going to happen when you let these people up in your house. They just be rummaging through the cabinets, going all through your freezer, and you just don't know what's going to become of it. And now he sees, you know, that she's back on TV and he's trying to figure out how he can get something out the freezer. And I'm just like, close my freezer and get up out of my refrigerator. And keep my Popeyes in there. Okay. Take the Popeyes out, actually. 
you know, I don't have much to say about it. Uh, it's a sad situation, but Kevin, if you're watching, this is the harvest you planted, now weep it. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Talk about it, George. Mm -hmm. Talk about yeah. it, Mr. Kevin. Yeah, Lee. that's Talk the harvest. About it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm weeping the harvest God promised me. Huh. Yeah, I'm Say weeping back. the harvest. Ooh. That's my song right there, George. I'm about to mm -hmm. I'm See, I'm the vocalist of the group. I'm the vocalist of the group. No, you want to be the vocalist, and you should stop saying that. Oh. Okay, anyways, day. on to the next topic of the <laughs> night. Drea Michelle, who is 39 years of age, only had a baby, is pregnant. She hasn't had a baby yet, but she is pregnant right now by her Beautiful. baby daddy, who is 22 year old basketball NBA star Jalen Green. Now, I'm going to say this. The girls ain't had nothing to say when. It was Jay-Z and Beyonce, and they are a substantial amount of years apart. Andrea can have a baby by the man. He's 21. He can drink. He can go to the club with her. Okay. He can. He got He got a chick with the NBA. We can't worry about it. I can't worry about it. Listen. Totally, Troy, totally agree with you, and I'm shocked that we're agreeing on something tonight. But listen, oh. they're both grown, okay? <laughs> they both knew what the consequences was, laying down without protection. It could have been a planned pregnancy. Who are we to judge, mm -hmm. okay? So let me say to you, Dre, and, and, uh, and your young man, girl, Jay, live your life more abundantly. Don't read, listen, stay out the comments. Who gives a damn? These people are grown. And let them I, be grown. And if it don't work out after the baby, why, why, come on out. That is fine, too. You have two grown adults. Uh, one is, is, is a little bit more growner. He has income, she has income. It's, as long as that child is taken care of, who are we to say anything? Well, I guess we talk about everybody else on the show. So, no, right. <laughs> to to but anyway, we can take a talk about her. George, uh -huh. so you feeling a little triggered over there? Uh, you know, when it gets down to talking about kids and baby daddies and, and fathers, you know, I'm real serious about it. I was talking about the, the, young, the young man. Oh, you know oh. what? Let me tell you something. Let me, let me let, let don't worry about me and my man in my house. <laughs> what you need to be focusing on is getting a man. Oh, oh, yeah. well, that's okay, child. I, I guess y'all say old enough to take a shot, old enough to shoot the club up, baby. But you know what? That's on y'all, okay? <laughs> bye bye. Is. Look for it. Uh uh. We ain't on the same page tonight. We ain't on the same page. Yeah, it's clear. We'll be on about it here another night, I'm sure. Keep it up. Keep it up. Because when they go low, Where I go to hell. All right. <laughs> Calm down. We can, we can vacation together there. <laughs> Why not? Anybody else got anything to say on this topic? Travis, what about you? Congratulations, girl. Next. <laughs> <laughs> and Darius, you said you just, it's on us. Old enough to take a shot, old enough to shoot the club up. I think that should be on a shirt. Oh, well, period. Let's get that. I.E. The group chat. They say when the girls ain't got nothing else, they sell a shirt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you friends. sold a few. <laughs> <laughs> I sold a lot. <laughs> Twenty ninety nine for a five dollar hand. <laughs> we can't worry about it. Travis, I know you're tired of me bringing up this lady and her man, but we are talking about Miss Netta and Charles because they are brand oh. ambassadors, I guess, too, with who your brand ambassadors for, Travis. Over there, the Ghost Plastic Surgery. And they just went and got them some BBLs and some lipo <laughs> and some stomach etching and things of the nature. Hi guys, and we are actually now back here live with yet another update. Guys, Miss Netta is just two days post-op and look at that booty, guys. Look at that booty. Charles is relaxed right now. Charles is relaxing. He's on the beach right now. Girl. Baby, if the app, one Charles, one. your apps are ready. Your okay. apps are ready, Charles. <laughs> When that swelling go down, Charles, Charles probably give y'all run for y'all money. It's gonna be tea, baby. Okay. You know, and then you know I with, here, here I am running over at gold. I want the Charles. Okay. <laughs> I want the Charles. Okay. Are you, are, you gonna want, are you gonna want him after that, George? Because you said he's gonna look. He's gonna give us a run for our money. Are you no, no, no. Charles, I got a man, and Charles is nothing of my type. <laughs> Charles, I just said you didn't have a man. We know you well, why would I want a man when I have one, Troy? I mean, you said he might look good. <laughs> Anywho, all jokes aside, you know, I am a brand ambassador for um, Gold's Plastic Surgery uh, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm just going to be honest. Um, 
you know, everybody knows no secret. I am on a zipper. I have lost almost 50 pounds. I wish they would have went the route of losing weight first. And then getting into surgery because Charles, it looked like one of those GI Joe, GI Joe dolls that you buy at the Dollar General that people don't step down a couple times and you see the dents on the side. But I do know the swelling is eventually going to go down and he will look right. But I wish he would have got on a diet first, or at least been on Zimpa like I am now and lost a little weight. Mm -hmm. um, Miss mm -hmm. Netta, Netta, Joe Netta, Joe, I don't know your name at this point. <laughs> I'm going to say. Joe Netta. Joe Netta. Joe Netta. Uh, you know, I think she should have had a tummy tuck first because we saw the booty with all the bumps, the booty bumps and all that stuff. And I just feel that she had the sleeve or the gas bypass. I don't know which one. Ooh, she lost a lot of weight. She really lost a lot of weight. That's excess skin. So I don't know why you're trying to put a BBL on top of that. You should have got a tummy tuck. Got all that stuff sucked in and all that stuff. I think she hey. got some lipo. Maybe she got some lipo for the. Or maybe she had a tummy tuck. We we yeah, haven't seen that. Babe, that's that tummy is not tucking to um George. We're gonna see the lot of She might have did it today. Yeah. So Travis, you know it's giving real risky business over there because I I know Miss Netta BMI is over thirty six, honey, and the girl still gave her surgery. Well, you know, goals plastic surgery um can work with patients high of um, BMI, but I don't know but, what her but BMI it is. is. But on a serious note, it is more risky when their BMI is is to pass that 32, 34. Actually, I did, Am I correct? I did this. Do I stand correct there? You stand correct on that, but her BMI is not that high. People don't realize she has a lot of excess skin because she lost so much weight. So her BMI is actually not in the 30s. I can't tell you what it is, but I did find out what her BMI is. How you found out what her BMI is? Because see, now that's a lawsuit. Help her. Child, that's public knowledge, honey. Well, Travis, go to the day. God give the yeah. glory. Great things he has done. They woke up walking upright. They got what they wanted. Hopefully, it works out the way that they want it to work out. And I think Troy, back to me. Back, back to you. <laughs> oh, you girls are you girls are ready to get over there and talk to that girl. Huh? Yes, we are ready to talk to that girl. Yeah, okay. that girl. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, now my last hot topic of the night. Now we are going to chase the reality, and of course, the chasing never stops. Recently, Chasing Dallas has released their season five photos and with their cast members, some old, yeah. some new. I did not see George. I don't know why he ain't on the cast. Oh, you living in there. Oh. Um, you know what? One thing I do want to say, um, I was talking to Markel a couple of months ago and child, I promise you he didn't steal my idea. But anyway, anyway, I told him, <laughs> I said, I really think it'd be really dope this season, whenever you do, you know, for y'all next season that y'all do blue, and I was loving the blue with like a star, like because Dallas is Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't see the star, but I did see the blue, and I thought all of them looked amazing. And amazing. Yeah. It was a skin mm -hmm. tone. It. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. The seven deep trade. All right. Next picture. What's the five about? You said, what's the one? Mm. Season five. Is this season five of Chasing Dallas? Yeah, this is season five. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's so nice. I like that, Tedley. 70. Who is he? Now, this is a handsome man. He's new. 70. I've that's my friend. Shout before. out to my friend. Oh, that's the one that be having the blonde hair and the blonde eyebrows. Yes, and the blonde I'm loving the, black, I'm loving the black hair on them. Yeah, I, yeah. Love, I love that. He's but amazing. they all looked amazing. That blue yeah. looked good on all of them. Now, all wait right. a minute. Uh huh. I said the same thing. Okay, it's giving bad boys. He's kind. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a fine man too. Like, what is going on in Dallas? Now, I ain't seen none of these cowboys when we we're down in Dallas for your birthday, George. Uh-uh. I kept you away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see, okay, this is true. He's giving body. Come on, Robert. Yes, Robert Way. I love his daddy of Dallas. I love, I love Robert. Robert too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, Robert is such a sweetheart. Yeah, he is. Who else we got? Okay, Astro, honey. Young Astro. Astro. Okay, Astro. Giving blue for teens. Yeah, it's a jersey for me. Miss Sean. Oh, I like Sean. I love Sean. He's that's so my, that's my image. Come on, Jeff. Okay, Jeff. Jeff. I like Jeff. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff is going to cost you, okay? okay. Jeff, 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 Jeff is a all look good. They did look a really good wrestling name for me. I love Jeff Jeff. But listen, shout out to those to those guys over there. I hope they have an amazing season. They all looked well. And, you know, hopefully they'll just keep the, you know, the legacy going for those who, you know, help start. And I wasn't the one that started or was a part of the starting. But, um, yeah, we, we're excited to see what they bring in this season. Amen. George, um, well, I, did, I was going to say something. 
try to be shady, but it, it's not gonna work. I don't it won't go hit right I, anyway. I don't, feel like doing any reads tonight. I don't feel like doing any reads, but your I'm shade or your read never hit. Girl, please. I'm trying to be nice to you. You're no only question. good when you popping your neck I, and snapping your fingers. But as far as trying to throw a shot, shade, or read, honey, elementary. <laughs> Pre-K. You can't beat me. Okay. Anyway, back to what I was saying, but George, see, we have to keep going. But however, I want to oh. ask you really quick. How does it feel not being on Chasing Dallas this season or being away from that part of the platform? Uh, you know, it really doesn't feel, I don't feel anything. I think that um, had I been in Dallas and I wouldn't recast mm -hmm. for this season, um, maybe so, but I mean, it wouldn't make sense for me to feel some type of way and I'm not there. I wish them the very best. I hope they all are very smart and strategic on their moves and showing up, use it to your ability, make this money child. Uh, feel, and build your fan base. That, I mean, I'm going to always, you know, clap from them for them in the background. And I want to, but more so, I was asking, like, how does it feel like where you're at in your life? Like, outside of Dallas itself and outside of, like, just being in a new space, like, how does that feel for you to, like, not be in that life? I guess uh, for the first time, I can be a viewer. And so <laughs> I can weigh in on my judgment. Mm -hmm. um, of the show, but you know, for me personally, um, it's okay. Sometimes you need a break from from that because you do, to an extent, you can get caught up in it, um, yeah. caught up in the comments, uh, you know, caught up just in people in your DMs. People can be very nasty. Um, so sometimes it's good for a break. It's good for uh, you know to 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 walk away from that, and then people be able to see you in a different light. Um, just even on this show. Um, you know, I don't feel like I, re I really have fun. I enjoy, um, you know, it's a good laugh. It's a good kiki. When you're filming um, a reality show and you are at odds with someone or if there's, you know, tension, you know, you never know what to expect when you show up to a scene. So not yeah. being able to be in that uh, and having to go through that uh, this past, this season, you know, during their filming time, um, I, I, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it. I, I, and it was good for me. It's, a, it's, it's good to break. But just yeah, know, maybe when I come back, Hmm. Oh, okay. Yes, oh, okay. 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 All things Maybe George. And, and if mm. the man looking like that in Dallas, I'm coming right on with you, George. Oh, uh, Darius, you always looking for a man, and then when you get one, you don't even send the plans of the day. Oh, and on Move that point, note, we're going to take a quick break right here on the group chat. And next up, we have our interview with none other than the Candace Diller Bassett from Real Housewives of Potomac, right here yes. on the group chat. Let's do it, guys. All okay. right. <laughs> Promote your business during the episodes of the group chat. Email us at info at mychasereality.com. The group chat is now on Sheen Magazine app. Head over now to see exclusive clips, bonus clips, behind the scene clips, all fun things and all things group chat right over on the Sheen Magazine app. Download it right now. What's up, everyone? It is Darius asking you to check out my newest children's book, DJ Stands on Business. Follow along as five friends who are entrepreneurs by the name of Pixel, Raven, a dynamic duo we can learn, and a children's book author named DJ use their entrepreneurial spirit to save money to go on a trip to Mexico. So follow along as children can learn about terms that teach them about entrepreneurship and give them the opportunity to open up the world in the adventures of friendship, and entrepreneurship. You can check out my children's book, DJ Stands on Business, as well as DJ's favorite day and Twinkle Little Star at www.kingdariusbooks.com. <laughs> what's up, you guys? Welcome back to the group chat. Listen, I know y'all been waiting, waiting, waiting patiently. Like we've been waiting for George to get together. But anyway, <laughs> we have the one, the only, the star of Real Housewives of Potomac from Hush, from Music. Oh, child, we got so much stuff to talk about. And I have a serious question to ask her throughout the night. But listen, we have none other. We're not going to call her full name. We're just going to say Candace. <laughs> Welcome, Candace, to the group chat. Welcome. Hey, group chat. <laughs> Hi, Candy. How are you doing? <laughs> We're good. We're good. <laughs> Yes, I love a giggle. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you were in the right place at the right time. Candace, yes. we came to know and love you, of course, on The Real Housewives of Potomac. But let's take it all the way back. 
we've read that you have competed across many pageant systems and was crowned Miss United States in 2013. What got you into pageantry and what was that experience like? So pageants was really, I think, my introduction to this world, you know, to being able to sit and talk to you, to acting, to music, to film, TV, all of that. My mom put me in my first pageant at five years old. Uh, my mom is, she used to dress us alike. She was, you know, she used to sneak and put lipstick on me for my first grade school pictures. So my mom is a girly girl, a girly mom. And so of course she birthed a girly girl and put me in pageants and I got hooked and I became just so enamored with the feeling that you get being on stage and competing and uh, meeting different women from different walks of life and dressing up and um, defining who I was for a group of judges and winning them over. All of that just excited me and it's created the mess that you see before you today. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's a beautiful mess and we love to okay. see it. Okay, really we love to see Beautiful gown. Beautiful gown. <laughs> 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 Yeah. We, we also know that you were a member of the gospel choir at Howard University. And I'm wondering, like, is that where you got your start in music or were, was music your um, talent when you were doing your pageants as a child? I came out of the womb singing. I was, yeah. I was in choirs my entire life, um, starting from elementary school. Um, middle school, high school. I've always been in a choir. I was in a girl group in high school um, called Blaze um, that was actually mentored for a brief time by Candy Burris. Wow. We had like a rehearsal house in Atlanta, in College Park. Uh, we would go out every night, write music, rehearse, learn choreography. We, we performed in a few smaller venues in Atlanta. Um, and for, I just, I always knew, I think, that I would do something in music. I knew I would have a music project somehow, some way. I didn't know how, didn't know who was going to help usher me into the music industry, but I just always knew. Um, and certainly HGC, Howard, the Howard Gospel Choir, um, helped with that. It helped me with my performance, helped me sort of stretch my range. Um, I'm an alto. I was an alto in, in HGC, but the altos in HGC are really sopranos in the real world. So... <laughs> in that choir really helped me to stretch my voice and learn my voice and learn to like dig deep and find spaces in my diaphragm. So yeah, it's HGC, that that experience really um, was a, a defining moment in helping me to, to understand my voice so that when I was later in life um, writing music and pitching myself to labels, I could like fall back on on that experience. And also, just to see how much your music career has elevated, I like to look at Candace as like a son. You know, let's compare. You know, it's a lot of darkness that may go around, but then I feel like Candace, when your music really started to get the notice and the publicity that it needed and so deserved, you became like the sunlight that everybody's like, okay, now this is some real good music. So how mm -hmm. has it felt for you to see that your music is finally getting the respect that it deserved a long, long, long time ago? It feels amazing. Um, it It is... It's liberating and it's validating to feel like this thing that has always been in you and on you and a part of you um, is received and understood by, you know, a mass group of people. Um, I, I love being able to connect with people through art, through any form of art. Um, and for me, music is like my, it's like, it's like my dumping ground. I like to pour all my guts out into my music. My new project is definitely a space where I like dumped everything that I was feeling, everything that was going on in my head and in my life um, into this project. And I, I love the feeling of hearing from fans and, and even people that have never heard of me saying, I listened to this song and it changed the way I thought about love or it made me feel um, better about the situationship that I was in with this guy, um, or it, it made it just made me happier. When I was going through a hard time in my life, I was able to turn on this song and blast it over and over again, and and it made me feel better. And that's why I I do art, all forms of art, acting, music, all of it is to connect and feel like um, like I can make someone feel better about a, a space that they're in or feel a, more alive about a space that they're in. And speaking of space, deep space. Woo, mm -hmm. honey.
Yeah. Yeah. We over there, everybody trying to be on, um, you know, performer and professional while we talk to Candace, but I'm going to keep it real. Listen, Deep Space, you can hunch on them songs, okay? There's some beautiful <laughs> music. You can do some serious hunching on that music. I'm telling you from experience, okay? Oh you can hunch on that okay, music. Yeah. You can sit out on the music. You can go to church on the music. Oh, you, can oh, on the music. <laughs> you can do some real things on that music. So, speaking of Deep Space, Candace, please tell us, like, what are some of your favorite songs and what was the ex inspiration behind Deep Space? Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I love that it. it's multifaceted. It, okay. it, you can shout and you can hunch. I love that. That makes me feel like I've accomplished something great. Um, <laughs> so Deep Space was my debut album. It was like my introduction in music to the world. It was terrifying. Um, but I was also really sure about it because I knew that I was an, an R&B girl. I love R&B. R&B raised me. Um, I always say that R&B music is the soundtrack to so many of our lives. And uh, I wanted my first album to be an homage to what R&B meant to me. And when I think about when I think about R&B, I think about 90s, the 90s. So I'm thinking about, you know, 90s Brandy music, 90s Monica, like I'm new edition even in the 90s and the way that they they were introduced to me at that time. Um, I, I wanted my album to be an homage in a way um, that people could listen to my album and be kind of transported back in a way to that time. So my album starts out with, um, with an intro. There are interludes where I'm kind of talking and um, my last song on my album is a gospel song, which was very common um, in a lot of 90s R&B projects. Um, Destiny's Child always did that. Um, a, lot, a lot of the girl groups, that's how they ended their albums. Um, so I, I wanted it to, to, to sort of pay respect to the music that made me want to be an artist. Um, uh, my favorite songs, it varies, it changes, but definitely my fa one of my favorites that never changes is Is It Enough. I love, yes. love, I love listening to the song. I love performing Is It Enough. It's like, it makes me feel like sexy and empowered and just full. That's one of my favorites to perform. Um, I Drive Back, obviously, that was okay. probably the biggest song on the album. I love that song. I love performing that song. I love the live version, the Kelly Clarkson show version of that song. Um, Situationship is one of my other favorites. It's kind of like a, a deep cut. Um, but I love the whole album. Like, I don't listen to it because I think it's weird. But if I if it ever is on or somebody else is playing it, I'll be like, dang, these are some good songs. Benefits, I love performing Benefits. That's one of my favorites to perform because we matched up Benefits with Is It Enough? And there's a Keith Sweat interlude in between there if you've ever seen my show live. And I love that. I, I just, I love, I love, Deep space, it's great. <laughs> As we know, your show is live. I had the opportunity to really get to know you on tour. You just yes. recently wrapped up the Love and War anniversary, 10th anniversary tour with Tamar Braxton. How was that experience? Because seeing you perform, let's let's back up. Seeing hearing you on a song is different from your actual live performances. So, how was that experience for you? Um, well, so yes, performing live is is definitely different than. Um, when you're recording in the studio, I love performing live. I there it's it's like it's like the difference between reading a book and then seeing the movie. And a lot of times the movie is not as good, but I feel like when I perform live, it's like the the amazing version of the book. Um, I like I I love interacting with the audience. I love you know seeing the audience talk back to me and sing back to me and it's such a humbling feeling to to look out and see the audience like singing your songs and performing your music with you um it's just it's exhilarating like it's fun to me it's the fun part mm. um and you know getting to open for Tamar I still pinch myself um I I'm a Braxton fan I love the Braxtons as a whole um, Tony Braxton has always been a voice that has inspired me and made me feel um, better about my voice because I, I often felt like out of place having a lower register and she um, really made me feel good about um, mm -hmm. the way that I sang and I really studied the way that she sang, the way that she performed. Um, and then of course, Tamar, I love 
Tamar's voice, but I love Tamar the girl. She's a girl's girl. And um, she's always embraced me. She's always um, just been supportive of me. And to have someone who is so gifted and so talented and like, like she's, an, her, vo her voice is alien. It's like not real. And especially when you hear her sing live, it's like, how is this coming out of her body? Like, what is, what is going on? <laughs> you know, I'm, it's, you know, I would perform and then I would run right back around and on the side of the stage because I want to see the show. And um, it was so inspiring and so cool and just like, just amazing to, um, to, to realize that, oh my God, I just opened for this vocal acrobat. Like, <laughs> how insane is that? And it was amazing. I, her team was amazing. Like, and I'm not just saying that because I'm, I'm here with the people, but just <laughs> I love Tamar's entire team. You guys, you embraced me. You, you made sure I was not just good, but great. Um, and I just, you know, I, she would invite me in to pray with you guys before her show. I, I, I just felt so loved and embraced and it was amazing. And, you know, I would love to do it again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you were highly requested. Oh, we those things as though they were. Oh, yeah. put, oh, put them yeah. in the shot oh. up to the oh. air. Yes. Maybe. Yes. No, because I, I was only supposed to do the DC date, the hometown date. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, it is, it is so amazing. And I, I still, I just can't even believe that I was asked to do like, I don't even remember how many more, but multiple dates after um, after the DC day, and it was amazing. It was so much fun. Okay, well, listen, Candace. Now you don't talk to Travis and Darius a little bit, but now you get to talk to me. Now I am a Florida girl, boy, whatever you want to call it. And you did a song with Trina on your single "Insecure." How was it working with Trina? Oh my gosh, Trina is amazing. She's another one who is such a girl's girl. She's so like soft and pink as Wendy Williams used to say like she's very <laughs> like she's such a girl's girl she's so sweet um super supportive when we were kind of trying to figure out my team and I um what we were going to do with Insecure and my team was like well I think we need to have a feature and I'm like oh, a feature like I just got into the game like two minutes ago who's about to get on song what is about, how's about to do this and we were just like kind of throwing names out there and Trina's name was one of the names we threw out. And I, I was, I mean, I thought that she would sound amazing on, on, on Insecure, but I was like, I mean, Trina is, don't have time to be running around with me. And sure, lo and behold, I was a lie. And she, you know, she said yes. And then when she agreed to do the video, I was like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> yes. are we kidding right now? Yes. Um, and, you know, she, and it was crazy because the day we were shooting the video, there was a tornado in Baltimore, which mm, mm. that don't even sound right. Sound right. I don't even call mm -hmm. it. Yes. <laughs> so it was like, it was a hard ride for her to get to us. And it was stressful. And we almost had to like pause production because it was like tornadoing outside. Yes. Um, but she showed up and she was amazing. And like, she's just really chill. She's like, like, yeah. you got this, you know. It's about to be bombed, about to be fired, about to kill it. She's just, she was just so amazing. And she apparently like cranked out her verse in like 10 minutes, which I was amazed by. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, that was surreal. It still to this day is surreal. Yeah, that's how us people from Florida are. We're very comforting, very chill. We like to, you know, just relax and, you know, go with the flow. But <laughs> speaking of going with the flow, you know, your music is flowing, your career is flowing. Um, but with your music, anybody else that you would like to collaborate with in the future, whether it's R&B or rap artists, like what are you looking forward to or who are you looking forward to collaborating with? Um, so I, there are a few. So um, she's kind of having a weird moment right now, but I still love her. I love Doja Cat. I know she's kind of, <laughs> she's such a multifaceted artist. She's, yeah. she's a great singer. She's a great, lyricist she she's interesting in the way that she presents her brand to the world i love the way that she dresses where she changes up her hair she's weird i like weird people she's like a weirdo i love that about her um <laughs> and then and this is maybe like a, a little shift but i would love to collab with maroon five i think that mm -hmm. they've been a staple in like 
pop. They kind of like teeter on the R and B line a little bit. Um, they're their MD and a member of their band, PJ Morton, I've admired forever. Yeah. And he's yeah. so talented and just an amazing vocalist, an amazing composer, just amazing all around. So that would be cool. So those are two that off the top of my head I can think of. And I love Maroon 5. Like, listen, it's a lot of songs by them that you just can't get away from it, especially when they uh, collaborated with, uh, was it Rihanna? For stay, oh my god! Oh yes, yes, exactly. Listen, I I listen to that song till this day, and I I'm a cancer, so I just been here just crying and weeping and <laughs> crying. Listen, um, so my last <laughs> my next question is, and my last question, you recently put out a visual for Fine Wine. Can we expect any new music or any other visuals from Deep Space? So Deep Space is coming to a close. Mm. Uh -huh. Fine no. wine, visual for fine wine. That was, as far as I know, that was the last um, visual and single from Deep Space. However, uh -huh. never fear because I have been in LA. I've recorded almost all of my new project in LA. Oh. I've been in LA um, back and forth since the top of this, the top of uh, late last year, since middle of last year through, I was just in LA last week recording. Um, I think we have like seven or eight songs done. Uh, <laughs> we're really only looking to do an EP. So, but I love that I have a lot of, of music to choose from. And I, I'm happy with every song that I've recorded. Like, I don't know how I'm going to choose. Um, but I'm really, really excited about this new project. It's very raw. Um, it's a lot edgier than Deep Space. Um, I am. I was referring to it as chaotic, mm -hmm. but my uh, was like, "Don't call it chaotic. It's you need to call it edgy. It's chaotic and it's edgy." <laughs> it's, it's we love chaotic. Very chaotic. Very <laughs> yes, it's it's like it's the chaos that you want. It's yeah. it's chaos that you can relate to. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm really excited about the lyrics of this next project. I was very vocal and very um, present um, in the making of this project. Not that I wasn't on Deep Space, but I was new and I was a lot more timid. Yeah, um, yeah. This project, I'm, I, I'm really proud of how not timid I was to say, yeah. no, I don't like this sound. I don't like um, this instrumentation. I want this and not that. And I don't, I'm not explaining why. Just do it this way, in a you know, in a in a Christian. Yeah. Way. <laughs> <laughs> I was right back in in a Christian. Yes, way. yes, I love, it. I love it. Yes, be Christian about it. But no, yeah. I'm I just I really feel, ooh, like it makes me feel like I want to like just rip open my chest and like show you everything. Is it a name I'm for? It? Um, we have a few names that I'm I'm toying around with, but I'm. Mm. I'm that. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Any chance of an Ashley Darby pop out on the album? Now, who would tell you those lies? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta ask. You gotta ask. No, okay, just listen. Um, no. <laughs> Maybe I'm the singer of the group. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. and when the time sure. comes and you need, you know, a soprano out, so call me. Um, okay. What's your name in the uh, Clark Sisters? The no, no, no. <laughs> Denise, call, is it you call me the DC? I can sing all, all three. Okay, oh I can my you God. Alto, you know, I'm the singer of the group. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you know, it'll be it I know the check's big enough for you to afford little old me, honey. <laughs> well, then, we gonna, we gonna keep praying that the Lord blesses us with the fire. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> we'll bring that you in. Add a little auto tune to those vocals too. With oh! you. Okay. <laughs> now, now that's low no budget. budget. No, I can't say I just be having I just be having a good time. Anyway, yeah. listen, so we're gonna switch gears just a little bit. Now, you know, I was introduced to you, honey, on Potomac, okay? And for yeah. me, I felt like you were you were a breakout star. Like, yes. I mean, mm -hmm. people were just absolutely drawn to you and your personality. So, you know, so what made you get into, you know, reality television? And was it a thought? you know, growing up that, you know, reality TV may one day be your, your thing. I never thought 
that I would be on reality TV. Um, you know, I think we, well, my generation kind of, we grew up with the, the beginning stages of reality TV. I remember watching The Real World and um, Flavor of Love and all those shows and, and enjoying watching them, but I never saw myself on them. Um, but then when Potomac first, well, I'm from Georgia. So of course, when Atlanta Housewives started, I was very excited about that. And it was, you know, an all black or mostly black female cast uh, of women <laughs> living these affluent lives. <laughs> Factual, not shade. Um, Factual shade. Factual <laughs> shade. <laughs> um, so I was excited about Atlanta. And then, you know, of course, I moved to the DC area. And when Potomac first started, I remember like being in bed with with my husband and being like, why and why didn't they call me for this show? Like, what is <laughs> like I, I was clearly available. What is going on? <laughs> and I I tell this story all the time. I remember because people always ask like, do, like do you do you have to audition? Like, how do you get on the show? I prayed about being on the show. I remember be, saying to myself, okay, if I could get on this show, I know that it could help me accomplish all of the goals that I have for myself, which is I want to act. I want to be in the film world, in the television world, scripted world. Um, I want to write and perform music. I want to, uh, there's so many things I wanted to do. I want to um, own businesses that mm -hmm. can reach people in, you know, in, in different spaces of, um, of, of the globe. Um, I wanted to my, my platform as a pageant girl was women's empowerment. So I want to be able to empower women um, on a grander scale. And I remember I said, I prayed, I said, Lord, if you give me this opportunity, I promise to try and use it to glorify you. I remember mm. saying this prayer. Mm. And literally less than a year later, I was getting an email from casting um, about the show. And they asked, and I remember asking our casting director, who's now a, a dear friend of mine, like, how did you find me? And he was like, nobody, nobody sent me anything about you. I was just looking and you came across my desk. So I mm. said, okay, look, look what God will do when you just ask. Okay. Just ask. You want to shout now or you want to wait till <laughs> We could take a praise break at any time, whenever, whenever you feel the moment. But no, that that is a shouting moment because absolutely, I I because I, I had a couch at the foot of my bed, and that was where I would always pray. And I got down on my knees and I said, "This is what I would like." And if you think, Lord, that it can be the vehicle to get me to where you have told me I'm going, then please help me to get there. And mm -hmm. And, and it happened. And I'm, I feel so great about what I have been able to accomplish on the show. Um, yeah. It's, it feels unreal. It feels surreal sometimes to think about um, all the things I've been able to do. And I was, I was at um, an event in LA last week. Um, it was Uptown Magazine and Lexus did an event and they honored several black Hollywood stars. Tisha Campbell was one. Niecy Nash Betts was one. Um, uh, Essence Atkins was one. It was just, and it was just a, a, a black Hollywood star studded event. I felt like, oh my God, is this, am, am I like on a different, what is this? Like, what, where are we? It, it felt unreal. And Shanice, who I am obsessed with, I don't know if y'all know who Shanice is, yes. but Shanice is like R&B royalty, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, walked up to me and was like, oh my God, I love you. And I fell out. And those are the kinds of things that I, you forget when, when, you know, your head is down and you're working and you're, you're trying to, you know, stay focused and accomplishing, um, your, all of your goals. You forget that, you know, not only are you able to affect, you know, regular people, but like Shanice might know who you are. So yeah. for, that was like such a cool moment for me. Um, again, as a vocalist, as someone who used to listen to her cassette tape on my yellow Walkman yeah. over and over, over, over until the tape didn't work anymore, um, to have her come up to me and, and acknowledge me and um, tell me that she knew who I was and that she loved me. That was like, yeah, insane. that's really dope. So, listen, so speaking of falling out, um, 
you know, so now that you're on, uh, you know, Potomac, you're very well known. The people know you. OK, do mm -hmm. you still shop the same? Do you still go out in public the same? Or, you know, when you go out, you have about five, you know, is it about five or six bodyguards? I mean, what the, what the <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I I try. So I remember when we were still in the pandemic, and my favorite place to go was Costco. That's where I love to go. So mm -hmm. I would go to Costco with my mask on, with my hat down over my eyebrows, like down. And people would still be like, get us. And I'm like, how do you even know? <laughs> and they would say, Your eyes. And I'm like, Y'all yes. lying. Y'all are lying. But so to answer your question, people do recognize you more, um, but it's not, I don't have bodyguards, you know, my man, my sister, my mama, those are my bodyguards. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, people are always kind, knock on wood, I don't have any wood in here. Um, <laughs> I got you. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> um, you know, and they they just want to tell you that they watch the show or that they love your music. And mm -hmm. um, and I love that. I love yeah. talking to people. I Like my friends used to always, my friends used to call me a friendly hoe in college because I would <laughs> always talk to random people. Yeah, yeah. So I, I love that part of this experience. That's really dope. So listen, Ken, I'm going to go off strip really quick and I'm going to be real messy and I'm sure I'll get in trouble later about it. But I just got to know this. OK, you know, yeah. now that you're you know, you, I, I feel like you're an OG. You know, I feel like beautiful gowns, the checks are big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why is this, or why do or why are we continuing to see Robin come back? I mean, she's a beautiful girl, but it, she boring, you know. So what's going on with that? <laughs> I'll give you a moment to take it. You got a drink? You got a drink? I'll give you a moment. I mean, I just, I think she's a beautiful girl, but she it is, when I say snooze fest station, and I made that word, okay? That girl, what's going on? Talk to us about it. You know, I wish that <laughs> I was a part of the casting department. <laughs> but one of the things I love about <laughs> this job is that my job description is clearly defined mm -hmm. and it does not say casting. Casting. I, I don't know why the people make the choices that they make. <laughs> and and I'm I'm grateful to stay, you know, to, to stay in my lane and to sit on my tuffet and mind my <laughs> You know what? Beautiful response. Beautiful oh, response. No, oh, so <laughs> okay. Baby, Blanche, listen, you weren't playing to say, baby. That was just smart. Okay. And I <laughs> thank you for your donation of, you know, <laughs> so good stuff. We appreciate that. So my last question uh for you is so what's your overall uh take on season eight of um Real Housewives of Potomac? Season eight was, um, I need to adjust my wig on that one. Um, season eight was, <laughs> it was, it was a, it was a wig puller. It was a tugger. It was, it yeah. was hard. Yeah. It was a hard season for sure. Um, I kind of jokingly said, jokingly, but not really said that <laughs> I would do season five over season eight. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's how hard season eight was for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, it's not one I would want to repeat. Um, yeah. I'm hopeful. You know, we taped the reunion. Um, there was a little bit of movement. Um, so I'm hopeful that we can figure out a way forward and that everybody can come back to, to work for the right. What was the movie? What was Let the movie? Let me write that down. What time is it? What kind Listen. of movie was it, Candace? Let me write that one down. Candace said, hey, what time is it? There was some movement, honey. Okay. Some movement. Y'all got to show me. Y'all got a reunion, man. <laughs> some movement. 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 Some I said everything for the most part that I needed to say. I may have left some things in the canon because they were disrespectful. Um, but for the most part, I said everything I needed to say. And um, I, I felt like the ones who wanted to hear me heard me and the ones that did not will be fine sitting in hell. <laughs> sitting in hell. Candace, I, did, I, I just want to sit in church with her. 
What'd you say, George? I just want to sit in church with her. Okay, just sit right <laughs> up. Oh, on the front row. On the front row. Okay. And I'll tell the Holy Ghost. I like the second row. Nothing, honey. <laughs> I like the second row because I need to be able to lean forward and whisper if it's a mess. <laughs> okay, that's me. I like that too. Yes, I didn't yeah. want to miss Holy Ghost, skip me because I don't want to miss nothing. Candy is about to let me know. <laughs> skip me, Holy Ghost. That's me. Bye. This is something I'm very curious to hear from you. I know this is an ongoing conversation that we've been having since the inception of the show. Do you feel that as a whole, the Real Housewives of Potomac brand will ever beat? the colorism claims? And if so, what do you think will have to happen in order for this show to transcend the colorism um, that we continue to witness and continue to see people bring up season after season after season? Mm. Um, I, I do. I think that, you know, our show is one of the great things about our show actually is that um, we are, sort of a reflection of the black community. Mm -hmm. I think what makes our show great is that um, people that look like us can turn on the TV and they see themselves reflected in our lives and our you know families and our spouses and our experiences. Um, and that's you know, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to be a part of the show. One of the reasons that I've, I've always been proud um, of our show. Um, I think that the conversation around colorism is one that I was comfortable having yes. because it reflected my my real life. And I, mm -hmm. I, I've always tried to be as authentic as possible on the show mm -hmm. um, so that you all can get a, a real view of my life. Right. Um, and in my real life, I grew up in a household where conversations are about race, about prejudice, discrimination, colorism, ageism, all, you know, all, all topics were, um, were on the table. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was hopeful that we could mimic that in a space that I thought was safe. Um, you know, and it turns out that everyone is not always comfortable having certain conversations, which is also reflective of our community, right? Mm -hmm. We, um, we oftentimes at the cookout or the family reunion get into it because some of us want to talk about stuff and some of us don't. Mm -hmm. um, and that is just the reality. I, I don't know that it is possible or even that it is our job as a cast to beat um, these colorism conversations. I think that the goal is to talk about these things and make it so that those of us who are watching the show can then go out into their communities and into their spaces and carry the conversations with them. And that is where change is made. It's not going to be made, you know, on Potomac. It's going to be made because you all are taking the conversation to your church, to your mama's house, to the kitchen table at your cousin's house, you know, to your group chats, to, you know, to your shows, okay, to, the, to, the, to, to this show. Um, or whatever spaces where Black people are having conversations, which is everywhere, yeah. and and hashing it out there, and that was what I hoped would come come up talking about it, um, and you know, for better or for worse, um, it ignited a conversation, and um, that's that is where change will be made. Absolutely, Woo. Absolutely. And, Woo. and thank you so much for starting that conversation. I mean, it's so prevalent, especially in the Black community and in cultures across the world. We all know yeah. that colorism exists, but it's, yeah. you know, it's a shame to see how it plays out with the, you know, within the viewers and within sometimes what I perceive in the cast. It's a shame, but I'm so excited and happy that we are able to have this conversation. So thank you. On a lighter note, what can we look forward to besides the bottle swinging? What can we look forward to for the remainder of season eight of Real Housewives of Potomac? And what's up with that? Ken, we got to talk about that. Maybe I'm fine. But I need to know what's going on in the P, baby. I know you said it goes down in the P, but what's happening? So we we look we have the end. I know we've all been ready to get to the finish line. I, yeah, and, I am, and I am with you there. Um, it's been a long season. I think it's been it's been muddy and difficult to watch at times. Mm. Uh, 
I'm really appreciative, of, you know, of all of our viewers for sticking with us and supporting us through it. You know, as, as, as challenging as it may have been, it was challenging for all of us as well. I, I know that I can speak for all of the cast when I say it, it was not easy for any of us. Um, but, you know, we we do wrap up. We do kind of come together at the end, I think. I think. There are some good moments, though. There's a moment with my sister, and I won't say who. <laughs> that was really good. I can't wait for you all to see that. Okay. Um, Let me take a drink. My, my, sister is, <laughs> my sister is, like I said, I don't need bodyguards because I have a sister. Gotcha. Um, Period. Period. And that was that was a, a a a good moment. It was a it was good, but it was also like, ooh, let me clutch my pearls. Um, yeah. Um, we we see, you see us kind of come together around um, a really special uh, celebration of Black women, which is which will be really cool to see. Um, we worked with a, a really amazing um, company that really supported us and and helped us to. Um, embody specific icons from um, Black culture. And uh, that, that was really fun. And um, we, we kind of figure it out and find a little bit of peace, I think. Um, but yes, before we find peace, there is a squabble of sorts. Hmm. Um, I am ob obviously and very clearly not pleased uh, with myself and Mm -hmm. uh, the images that have been running rampage across Beyonce's internet. <laughs> <laughs> however, however, I did say that you know, and you all have seen it. It's it was a I was a, in, in a rock and a hard place. I have obviously been in a situation before exactly. that is very triggering, exactly. and you know, you, to have a drink thrown on you and to turn around and see someone who is being held back from charging at you. Um, I would question anyone, you know, with what what would you have done? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I I panicked. I said, okay, here we are again. How am I going to defend myself? Because I can't I was wearing like six inch platform Valentino shoes. I wasn't Baby, the girls were squabbling, okay? Yeah. They were the heels were just scraping across the floor. I yes. had to pick up what was close by and and I would have done the same thing. It was not a proud moment. I don't condone no, violence. I don't, because um, I know there are a lot of young women that watch this show. I don't want any young, any person, but especially yeah. any of our young Black women to watch that and say, that's what I would have done. No, I want I want us to, to, to grow and yearn for better for ourselves. Um, but in the moment, yeah. That was the choice that I made. Thank God, you know, that I was protected and I didn't have to do anything. Um, but at the same time, I my heart like still like aches that you know my homegirl Kiarna had to do have you know, a scar mm -hmm. on her face mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. someone wanted attention. Mm. It's oh, like that. It be like that sometimes. It, it bees like that sometimes, and you know we we've had a lot of conversations amongst the group about it, and you'll see that play out as well on the finale. The conversations we have with Ashley and kind of asking her because this was her friend. Not to bring um, these people around, right? Period. So she should have been left them on Sesame Street. Now, on, on another note, now I really like Kiana. Now, how do we end up giving the flute to Ineka instead of Kiana? I'm just I'm See, there oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I'm am sorry. not in the casting department. My my title <laughs> on my contract says talent. Talent. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, we <laughs> begging to get it out. We just begging to get you on talent. Okay. Just like I, me around you these kids, I gotta keep it quiet around here too, child, so they can keep me around a little while longer. So I'm okay. gonna shut you <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Okay, quick question because we're going to go to a quick break and then we're going to jump into our game. Candace, quick question because I see it in the comments. Y'all see it in the comments too? I see it in the comments. Are you coming back to Real Housewives of Potomac next season? Again, that is, you have to talk to casting or talk to production. You know, yeah. I think I'm getting fired every season, honestly. Absolutely not. Absolutely. 
You're the show. You, you're the show. We, we're watching for you at this point. You are neat. And I, and I mean, and I'm not just saying this. And I think every talent, every person on the show, well, some of them, bring something different. Yeah. But right. I, I'm a firm believer, like, that show needs you. Like, yeah. you're the firecracker. I think mm -hmm. we look at the dynamics of the show, everybody is, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I really feel like, I, I'll be shocked if they didn't renew your contract. Because then, I mean, what do you have? You know what I'm right. saying? So with Candace, you just never know what's going to come out. Right. And, and that's, that's what I can really appreciate. And it's real. You know what I'm saying? Yes, unfortunately. I feel like they're scared to be you. If like, they you, don't see your contract. Yes. <laughs> call me. Now, I don't know what I'm the group doing. Chat. <laughs> call the group chat. Damn. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. The, people are, the people are asleep on the pee, baby. You came and woke that thing up. Yeah. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> we'll listen, y'all. And it's speak, speaking of waking up, listen, I have a question for Candace. I'm going to throw it out there, but she's definitely going to answer when we return from commercial break. We are going to find out. You know, I said she's one of the girls, and I already know the question is, but I want to know if Candace is a top verse or a bottle. <laughs> but listen, you guys. <laughs> Take a quick break on the group chat. We'll be back with more with Candace on the group chat. Yeah. 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 I'll be right back yeah. with more. <laughs> the season two of the group chat is here, and we are bigger and better than ever. We're bringing you the latest tea, gossip, and more with me, Travis Ware, George Sloan, Troy Gaskins, and Darius Williams. Watch the group chat Thursdays at 8 p.m. on the Chasing Reality YouTube channel. Everyone, welcome back to the group chat. Tonight, we are so excited to be joined by Candace Dillard Bassett of the Real Housewives of Potomac. Hey. Now, we're going to play a quick game. Candace, we are going to pop up a few ladies on the screen from the Bravo sphere. Tell us the first thing that comes to mind when you hear each of these names. Are you game, Candace? Yes, let's play. All right, first name, Candy Burris. Uh, worldwide. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> Next up, Giselle Bryant. <laughs> Candace, are you asleep at the wheel? No. <laughs> No, thank you. All right. Well, you heard it here first, people. No, thank you. All right. Next name, Nene Leakes. Nene Leakes is an icon. A beat icon at that. Yeah. 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 All right. Next up, Monique Samuels. Um, Pet Cemetery. <laughs> and she did not come through my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to do with it. George likes his customers with their eyes closed. Okay, next up, <laughs> last but not least, tell us the first thing that comes to mind when you hear Leah McSweeney. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's been <pencil> some <laughs> It would just be gasp. <laughs> I'm out of here tonight, y'all. It's just giving I'm out of here. Yes. Yes. Damn oh. <laughs> tough crowd, Candy. I'm so scared. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Candace. Thank My you pearl. so much. My Thank you so much for playing the game with us, Candace. I really appreciate you humoring me and telling me the first thing that comes to mind when you see these people. Okay, Travis, you can't catch me on the floor. I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm still at Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Dead. I'm still okay. there. Dead. Literally. <laughs> that was a cute you game. To meet you. <laughs> that was a cute game and all, but the real question still stands. Y'all know before yes. we took a commercial break, I asked Candace a serious question. You know, she's part of the girls. She's part of the community. You know, we yes. embrace her over here on the group chat and on the community too, but we want to know. Candace, we had a serious conversation one particular night, and we, did. we talked about a lot. I want to know, are you a top, bottom, or a verse? So I'm trying to remember what I said when we were talking about this. But if I had to say at this very moment, I'm a top. Like, ah. Yes. I'm in charge. Me too, okay? girl. I'm in charge of the girls. Yes. <laughs> Y'all, like, I always know. And I, I know people say that, like, women, type A personalities in the bedroom, they like to be dominated. And, you know, maybe, and maybe that could mean I'm a little bit burst, but 
my first inclination was to say that I'm a top because I'm yes. I'm I'm handling the business. Okay, I think yeah. you're a power top, Candice. You got to find power top. Is it okay. a dome top or soft top? Okay, y'all see, y'all be giving me new terms. That I have to <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am so okay, sorry. Hey, what were the options? Behavior. We'll just leave it at top. Okay, don't okay. leave it at top. We'll just leave it there. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll invite you to the Power Top Association meeting <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah. We'll bring you to some classes. Please do. Please educate me. <laughs> I'm a quick learner. Please educate me. Okay. Girl. And speaking of being a quick learner and also being invited to the Association of the Power Tops and Power Versus and Trades, what can mm -hmm. we expect for you for the rest of this year and also 2025? Because I know you booked the busy girl. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I actually I just booked a uh, a performance in June that I I'm happy to talk about soon. Um so I'll be performing. Um I will be releasing new music very soon. Um and just trying to figure out how to live my life. Like Yes, more abundantly. Yeah. Yes, live this happily. Good, sweetie. Yes. Okay. You're doing it. You're doing You're it. You're doing it. Yeah. You are. And then also, what about your social medias? Everybody should know your social medias by damn now, goddamn. If y'all don't know what? my social media, you don't need to know it because okay. Amazing. But if if you if you dare, I'm on Instagram <laughs> and Twitter at the real Candace. Uh, it's 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 a fun place. I come in peace. We just mm -hmm. like to key, you know, in the spaces. And you can purchase merch. I I still have a lot of merch, vinyl, t-shirts. I'm releasing a new shirt when the reunion drops. Oh. Um, at CandaceDiller.com, so you can check that out as well. Yeah. All right, <laughs> and listen, it's Candace. the coins for me. It's the okay. coins for me. <laughs> the real coins. And real I want to say this before we wrap up this interview, Candace. I want you to know that we give you your flowers while you're still here. You matter. Mm -hmm. You are important. Never question why you are in a room. And I know you speak very humble about yourself and the things that you accomplished. But Candace, you're a bad girl, honey, and okay. never forget that. You yeah. are a bad girl. I want to say the other word, but I ain't going to say that word. But you are a bad girl. And mm -hmm. never question the reason why God placed you in the room that you're in, because you're there for a reason, not just for a season. You're there for a reason. And you yeah. are the reason to be there. So don't never think or downplay the reason why God has placed you in the rooms you are, because you prayed about it. He gave you an answer and you're in your season. I'm telling you, Candace, I'm so proud of you. And we at the group chat, we love you. 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 <laughs> and I would venture to say that you're the most accomplished. Accomplished person on the cast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ain't yeah. no storylines being made up over there. Oh, okay. none. And then after that, I'm going to get you over at the funeral home to do the acknowledgements. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going to get you over at the funeral home. I got to get you over yes. to this family. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All I need you to say is to this family. That's it. <laughs> Okay, I can do that. <laughs> yes. Watch out, Major Parts. Right? Watch out, Major Parts. Yes. That's my girl, though. But yes, yes. I, I, I can get on her level. Yes. Thank you all. Yeah. I need to take y'all with me. Y'all are like a great set of melanated cheerleaders. Like, I need to take y'all with me everywhere. Thank so, thank you, so you for, for pouring into me and for making me laugh today. I needed a good laugh. So, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We thank you. And before ah! I start crying, listen, you guys. Oh, you don't have no triangles. You need to go to put up the I received that, baby. I had to. If I had a brush like Travis, I would have been patting. Get it right. Catch it. Uh, okay. My... <laughs> Travis, back to you. <laughs> this is so long. Guys, listen, thank you, Candice. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with more. It's the group chat, Candice. <laughs> thank you, Candice. Thank you, Candice. Thanks, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the group chat. Listen, y'all, that interview right there with Candace, y'all. What y'all think about that, boys? That was a good interview, Chash. It, it was, was very good. I live for her. I love the HBCU queen, period. Okay. Listen, baby, Candace, Candace is just a beautiful soul. Beautiful soul. Beautiful tea. Her smile is good. You know, I really, I'm trying, I'm going to get her over here. You know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to have a high profile service and I'm going to say, Candace, I need you on the acknowledgements. I yeah. need you. Beautiful. I had a good time. I did. That was good one. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that. More of that. More of that to come on the group chat. More of that to come. Yes. George, back on you. <laughs>
This your segment. Oh, it's on me. <laughs> listen guys listen we've had an amazing night we've had some great conversations we also had a bomb interview so y'all already know what time it is you know i say the same thing every week they give me the simple task <laughs> Down with one for everything. Let her get up. Let her see if something broke first. Okay, let her see. <laughs> Sarah, Ann, Sarah Ann was concerned. Pepper Ann was concerned, baby. Mom. No, let me tell you. You're not okay, Mom. You're not. You're not. not. Pepper Ann. Baby, Girl, the, the role Ann. of Oxygen. <laughs> Did you want the ambulance to get out on that? Okay, oh, girl, girl, she gonna end up suing the mama. Girl, you trying to call 911 for the mama. And girl, she finna sue you. Cause she gonna take, take you out. out. <laughs> oh, Lord, they draining. Okay, y'all, we have another video here. <laughs> Put it back in your... Hit the gas, bro. Hit the gas, man. That bitch said, I don't even know. Hit the gas, bro. 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 Oh, oh, it's the right. no friends for me. No friends. Okay, it's the no friends. Okay, they led him out there. They but he's gonna be a whole too. new afraid. Forget oh. the break. Lock him, oh, up. My God. Lock him up as accomplices. That is crazy. That Somebody is, seriously hurt. That's crazy. Mm -mm. Look at him. Sorry. Right now, he's rolling. Rolling. All right, roll out next one. All right, that was the last TV. What? One of them things DJ bought you. What is called? DJ didn't buy that. I don't think it's a Brugal Cuba. See, first uh -huh. I had Cord. Cord had a big one. Then I got it. Uh -huh. Now I'm finna go. Then I need me one of them things for my TV. What? One of them things DJ bought you. What is called? DJ didn't buy that. I don't think it's a Brugal Cuba. See, first I had Cord. Cord had a big one. Then I got it. Now I'm finna go to Wobble. A Brugal Cuba. Listen. A Brugal Cuba. Okay, okay. Just a you, bro. It just be okay. so funny. How do so you silly. say it? A you, bro. Roku. 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 Oh, I've been saying it wrong too. I can't laugh. Well, we say old people. Anyway, <laughs> but you think you're being the oldest. <laughs> but the only one giggling. Oh. <laughs> say shade. Say shade. Uh, roll the no. next player. Wait, <laughs> Travis. Uh -huh. Travis, how you say it? Ruku. Okay, roll the next clip. Get her. Who put shit in the damn freezer? Look at this old ass shit. What the fuck? This is throw up. Shit. Throw up. Old oatmeal smush pies got freezer burn. This got Mama June written all over it. God damn. And he want to talk about my goddamn refrigerator. Look at him. And I never, I, I done told you this before. I never argue with a bitch with no vegetable oil at her house about what's going oh, on. I had canola oil. Oh, that's all that matters. The canola oil is a healthier version. If, you know, it's, it's strange when the tables turn. You when you, you come to my house, you find you a seat. He had, you you should have saw the stuff he had in that freeze. I was embarrassed, honey. It oh was my just God. very much right I refrigerated had, vibes. I'm not going to lie. I had a good time over there, Derek. He had freezer burn. No, no, no. He had freezer burn. Oatmeal smush pies. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God.
that was frozen that he cooked and put it back in the freezer. It was a lot going on in that freezer. Oh, wow. I was there. You, know what, so you can't never talk about what it got in my freezer. It gets my that ass was, ass what was that? Good sweet potato pie filling. And this is the sweet potato pie crust. So I'm gonna put the sweet potato, sweet potato pie filling in the crust. And then you're gonna be the first one over for dinner. I'll pass, I won't be eating that, I'm sorry. Yes, you will. I'll take a piece. I won't, I'll take a piece. You will, thank you, Troy. Mm -hmm. And it is a gourmet, a gourmet stuff. ice cream sandwich. It is not freezer board. It is not an oatmeal cream. That ain't the one I saw. That was a new gourmet. Bag. It was two of them. This is gourmet. It's some Trader Joe's. Pull the oven up. If you want Pull one, the other one. one up. Well, I sure wish I would have known they were over there because I would have went over there and got me uh, one or two. Because we you know, two, yeah. maybe one I ate a, a box of Pete cinnamon one. rolls or something. But you know what? Right. The next time you come to my house, your ass going to starve, OK? I did starve. I had to buy the pizza. What are you talking about? I was starving when I got over there. Oh, not, all not right. Travis, don't do that. Travis, 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 because you said you was hungry and you wanted to order food. Don't do that. You, you did. Everybody was hungry. You did. And then what was Everybody. crazy, when we ordered the food, he still complained about what we ordered. And then one ordered another 60-piece wing. We like, yeah, I said chicken wing from the jump. I said I wanted a chicken wing and a burger. And all I right, would tell the people that we get paid in pizza over here at the group chat. I'll well, let's go down. Oh, all right. Well, on that note, Troy, <laughs> that note, Troy, back to me. Back to you. No, I'm supposed to say that. Oh, sorry. Troy, yes. Back to you. Back to me. Thank you so much, George. <laughs> I appreciate it. Listen, we're not going to deal with Travis and his ungratefulness tonight, but we will say we're grateful for all of you guys for tuning in to another week of the group chat with the boys. Now, listen, I know. Y'all are excited for what's to come because this is our first big interview here. Listen, it was such an accomplishment. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you are interested in waiting for more. Travis, thank you. Darius, love you. George, keep it cute. But guys, this has been another episode of The Book Why, why am I always last? Well, the Bible says that the oh, last one yes. be first. Oh, those who are last <laughs> will one day be what? Oh. Woo! They that wait upon that was like fire shut up in my bones, baby. We know I felt that now. That's a big fire. Well, we got on that note, we're going to take it out. Thank you again for watching the group chat. Tune in each and every Thursday at 8 o'clock p.m. right here on Chaser Reality. Group chat. The group chat is here to stay. And I got to make some pay. So I show up to work to play. And I read these girls now like shade. The group chat. Beautiful girls. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>